Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. I am going to be going live today with my friend Jesse, a breatharian. Um, so I have been on a liquid diet doing my juice fast for 102 days now. So I've been getting really interested in breatharianism and um, the idea of it as I've been receiving a lot of rewards and just magical experiences on this journey. But I really don't know that much about breatharianism. So when I found Jesse, the life cultivationist, um, I decided that I needed to talk to him and ask him some questions. So I'm going to bring him on today and see what he can teach me. All right, let's go. Let's bring on Jesse. Hi, Jules. Hi, Jesse. Great Bless to see you. Blessing, sister. Great to meet you and see you, too. How are you today? I'm doing excellent. Even better now. Thank you for being here with me today. My pleasure. My pleasure. Tons of fun. <laughs> yeah, I know you're a busy guy, so I really appreciate it. Oh, yes. Uh, it's, it, you know, the life I've chosen. I have three boys, I have a homestead, you know, uh, <laughs> three businesses, so it's, you know, uh, my servant in this time, so. Amazing. I'm glad to be we're, here. We're living off the land right now, like, uh, in, a, in a difficult way, we're kind of living in a barn right now, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, watching your story a little bit and how things are going for you there, I can relate. Yeah, I figured you could. So, yeah, and I have a toddler, so she's she's an added, you know, wild card in there. Yes. Wild card, just undoing everything we're trying to do. <laughs> I totally know. I have three teenage boys, and we actually moved out to our homestead here to home birth our second uh, son, um, and that was really magical for me. Like, um, we were able to do a water birth with him, and it totally reformed my idea about birthing and how it's supposed to go. And, you know, it was amazing and incredible and empowering. Awesome. Oh, my God. I talk to women about this all the time. I had a natural birth uh, in water and uh, no drugs, no doctor. And it was empowering and i felt like a goddess not like i was dying like most women describe so it blew I'm my mind i had this whole i mean we had home birthed our first son um but you know and and that changed my perception but it, there was some difficulty but when and we weren't able to water birth with him even though we wanted to um because there was myconium staining um uh so we knew is, you know, he had to be, you know, vaginally birthed just in the open air. Um, and it took some time. But when my second son was born, he came so gently. He like, he was just, he came out in the amniotic sac. And, wow. And uh, like, he didn't scream. He didn't, you know, he, he, he started to cry once he came out of the water and everything. But he was like, my wife didn't tear. She didn't have any of the normal difficulties you know it was it was mind-blowing and totally uh life-changing experience for sure congratulations yeah <laughs> we were going to talk about breatharianism but we started talking about birthing but it's the same the same vibration you know same oh vibration. yeah i just want to you know we are so capable of so much that we don't realize and, you know, the female body is it's the most natural thing you could ever do. So um, I, I'm glad that I'm glad that we're talking today and we can share this truth. And even if it's a bit off topic, it's so important. For sure. And so for sure. beautiful. But I do I have a lot of questions. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's after you. Go ahead. 
I was just saying I, it is on topic, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do have a lot of questions about your lifestyle. As I'm on this uh, 102nd day of only juices, I'm experiencing a lot of profound changes, a lot of spiritual ascendance and magical events that <laughs> that I just I just uh, you know I can see why someone would become a breatharian and mm -hmm. that drew me to your account and I just thought you know what is it like to be breatharian and so how do you define breatharian breatharianism from your own personal perspective well I like what my teacher Ellie Tom uh, says is it's a breatharian is someone who uh, can eat little food or none at all um, and uh, so and that really to be understood that like birthing which is a process and it takes time and there's different state and once you know you become a mother or a father like you, you're still nurturing there's a continuity of nurturing that child from in utero for nine months to the rest of its life. Like it doesn't stop anywhere along the way at birth or 18 or something like that, you know, same with this process. It's a process of self love and a pro pro process of actualization of our potential and our, in my view, our Bodhi heart mind, our, uh, our Buddha mind or our loving compassionate heart. Um, because this ties in with me to all kinds of stuff around physics, the electromagnetic toroidal field, etc. cetera. But um, uh, so uh, breatharianism is really about understanding that uh, we are light beings primarily, that this whole uh, reality is a projection of light uh, from uh, the creator or source, um, and that we're emanations of that. And that cosmic energy, that we're beings of energy in a sea of energy. So that's something else my teacher would say is, does, does a fish know it's underwater in the ocean? You know, um, so it's about attenuating the body to be able to adapt to uh, the rarefied subtle energy that's everywhere. But it's, it's actually, um, you have to cultivate it in a variety of, of ways. It's not just changing to liquidarianism you know and there is the thing of like you want to do it slowly um so i've been you know just to frame sort of my past i uh have been a liquidarian for the last four years four and a half years or so um i'd say like 98 95 to 98 percent because i do have a family uh, like sometimes i'll get into a little bit of chips or just to taste a little bit of whatever they've making you know it's part of me connecting in with them i'm they're cooking it you know it's been a massive challenge to learn how to do that you know and not like partake you know um but um you know it helps uh it's actually been a an important part of my process of what feeds me you know is this as a herbalist and as a permaculturalist like is to feed people you know um uh, the highest quality food you know and that's so the breatharian path, I know you have questions about it and I want to, I'll just, you know, stammer on endlessly, but, you know, I see it as being made of many, many pieces, you know, so you have to, one piece is the diet and nutrition. I, I come at it through the aspects of alchemy of earth, wind, fire, and water. We're beings of earth, wind, fire, and water. So uh, the earth element, giving yourself that great nutrition, you know, of the earth, organic you know, uh, nutrition from the earth and also probiotic, you know, as well as grounding, you know, I'm, you know, barefoot all the time, sucking up, you know, uh, negative ions from the earth. That is electricity. That is, so it's not, you have to get other forms of energy because you're energy being. So if you're going to stop food, you need other energy, right? You know, so there's the earth element and then there's the air element. Breath, breath work is, super key it's you know breatharian right you can go uh you know anyone can go 
many weeks without food, a uh, few days without water, uh, but only a few minutes without the breath. We're, we need the breath first and foremost. And um, so, um, and then you also uh, need water, you know, you're, you know, your water being 70% water. And this whole thing is about electricity. So you want, you know, the body to conduct electricity. You want high vibration structured water, you know, paying respect and love to the water, um, you know, putting it in a, a, maybe a, a crystal vessel or just a glass vessel and putting it in the sun or putting flowers in it or crystals to imbue it with the magic of creation, you know, so that when you take that and it becomes your blood, you know, um, you have this high quality, you know, intention and structure because it's like an informationally dense crystal. Um, and then fire, you need the sunshine on your skin to create vitamin D. And I do sun gazing um, because the eyes are the window to the soul. The full spectrum light of the sun processes stress uh, chemicals like cortisol. Um, and it's, it's very therapeutic. It's uh, very healing of mental disease. Um, and, you know, it's uh, a way to start to attenuate and open the pranic channels that you have in your toroidal field and in your physical body, in your fontanelle, you know, that place where you, when you were birthing, <laughs> um, you know, the, the plates of your skull were over, overlapped and they open up and you can feel on a baby, there's this pulsy spot right here. And that's your pranic channel for heaven chi. And then you have one coming up through your perineum you know, of, for earth chi. Um, and it centralizes in the heart. So we're harmonizing earth and sky in our heart field. And a zero point energy is there also, which is love. So that's kind of the way I view it and approach it. But there's other aspects to uh, sexual energy cultivation. So you're not, you know, wasting your seed. You're, you're uh, being temperate, you know, with your sexual energy. Um uh, and so what my, my lifestyle and day looks like is I do a 20 hour dry fast every day. And then I have four hour window that I drink liquids and, or maybe have some seaweed snacks or something with my kids. And then, uh, that's my cycle. And, and I, so I meditate every morning and sun gaze, I ground all day, every day and work in the garden. You know, I, I work with juices and teas and broths and, um, uh, my my service is my joy to my family and my community and joy is another energy field that we can tap for uh, sustenance so, so that's why people say this you know job feeds me or this relationship feeds me so that's my long winded answer <laughs> I loved it I'm soaking it up you're teaching me I really appreciate it I uh, you know, take all the time you need. I'm just blessed to have the information. Um, and yeah, I just really noticed on my, uh, liquidarian diet that, you know, I was opening up and noticing that you can get nourishment from so many other places and it's so amazing and so beautiful. And, uh, yeah, just really cool to hear you spell it out for me. Um, did you start out wanting to go breatharian or did you kind of like just get there no. explain explain how it happens okay yeah that's you know a good story i see you know you've been on this rod journey and that's kind of what started for me is uh about i guess it was about 12 years ago now i was starting to have a like a health mental and physical health crisis you know I'd been a permaculturalist and, you know, pretty stickler organic, but I was eating standard American diet. I'd still eat, you know, burgers and breakfast burritos and, you know, beer and all that stuff that was normal, you know, for my, especially my generation and where I grew up and everything. And, uh, you know, um, I started to get back into meditation and I had heard about sun gazing. Um, because I was a consciousness explorer, um, you know, because I'm, I'm an herbalist, you know, part of what started that was my exploration with like psilocybin mushrooms and, you know, cannabis, you know, as a youth. And that opened me up, you know, and so uh, I got in this, but my sister turned me on to meditating. She's like, you want to get high? 
you should try breath. And I was like, oh, you know. And then I came, yeah, I came into sun gazing, was trying to clean that back in terms of my mental health, you know, just feeling challenged as a young father having three kids trying to run all this and um, not supporting myself well with, with my diet, you know. Um, and then uh, my wife wanted, well, my friend gave this, this book about these Russian, this Russian family who had all these diseases and, and they healed themselves with raw foods. And they, it really appealed to me because they uh, did this journey. Uh, I think it was the Pacific uh, uh, Crest Trail. And they just foraged for wild edibles the whole time and just ate raw wild edibles. And the health, you see them at the beginning and you see them at the end. And they're just like, you know, incredibly uh, um, fit and, and strong and happy looking. You know. um, uh, and so my wife started getting into it and our friend gave us a cookbook and she got a Vitamix and we started doing smoothies, you know, and just little pieces started to come into me, you know, about raw food. And then I just started just feeling better and better and higher and higher, you know, and, yeah. you know, at a certain point, alcohol left me, you know, I was like, this thing, I didn't have to do, it was just about adding, right? And people were, you know, wonder how to get to these places. It's just about adding these these practices and things, you know. And the other things will fall away. Um, so, um, you know, my addiction to porn and everything went up with leaving meat. That left, you know. Um, I gained gr greater respect, you know. Um, I've always had great respect for the yin and the mother and everything. But men are also... Um, bombarded and inculcated in a negative way, you know, in that, uh, and we're chemically castrated. And one of usually, I know for myself, and one of my first, my first sexual experience was being having my foreskin cut off, you know, um, being genitally mutilated. So um, that's a whole nother trip. <laughs> but anyways, I got into greater sacred sexuality and respect with myself, and my body, and and my, my partner, you know. Um, and so it's just like reclaiming all these little pieces bit of, by bit of my integrity, really, you know, and my wholeness. And I just, I could feel it and I just needed it and wanted more. And so I just kept going, you know, and just wondering where the top was. And it's like, I think we're all angels, actually. Uh, you know, according to medical astrology, we all have our angles, you know, and those if we're in balance with our angles, we're, we're more angelic. When we're out of balance with ourselves, then we, we aren't in appropriate. You know, if we're not in our joy and our truth, you know, then, you know, we can't express that part of ourselves. So, um, so yeah. And then eventually, you know, uh, it's this whole thing of maintaining the, the various practices more than anything consistently. So I was meditating every day. I was sun gazing every day. I was doing raw food every day and I wouldn't accept like, because I would start to work. I'd be like, ah, I'm just gonna have this breakfast burrito this one time and I'd eat it. And I'd be wrecked, you know? So I got this negative Pavlovian relationship going on with stuff that wasn't good for me, anymore, you know? And so I just kept on, you know, doing that, being more attentive, you know, with my sexual energy and my partner, you know, exercising, you know, that's another key part of the breatharium path because we're energy beings, you're wanting to build energy. So your, your sexual energy is this, your cerebral spinal fluid that recirculates for men and women. Um, and the more it recirculates, the more it refines. And these are the best of your cells. So the, they, they potentized and this makes you more potent. And it is light. That's why at sex crime scenes, when they, they use a, a black light because it phosphoresces it's actually light. Um, so, and if you think about this, you can recirculate and refine this. And then when you have a child, you're gifting the best of yourself to that child so that they have every bit of the best of you and every advantage that you could offer them. You know, what if we created our, our children this way in a more intent, intentional way of, you know, refining ourselves and then, putting that in loving intention and our fullness into our, you know, children, you know, I think that'd be, you know, if I could just spin the clock back a little bit, we did a lot of that, you know, but, um, 
that's what the way I'd run it, you know. So, um, but yeah, eventually breakfast lent, left me, and then lunch left me, and then I got into fasting more, and I was watching uh, Ray Mayor and Ellie Tom Alameen and Jazz Muheen and you know learning about this lifestyle and how it's really a, a, a freedom lifestyle. You know, you can choose to eat if you want to. Most breatharians do, you know, for the enjoyment of the experience of eating, but for nothing more. And then they don't have to, and they do not be addicted to food because we are chemically addicted to food. You know, there's all, you know, all the things that are medicine and food are also, you know, toxic. Uh, too much of a thing creates disease. That's why there's such an incidence of like gluten allergies, for instance, now, you know, ancient Kometan wheat, you know, sprouted so and made into sun baked manna bread might be different, you know, than something, you know, like a rainbow bread, you know, <laughs> with glyphosate, etc. So there's this whole, you know, tie with our food that you and I would probably love to geek out on too. The tie with our land and the tie with our food, like the 50% of people get cancer these days because we put all this toxicity into the land and we're as bioaccumulators at the top of the food chain, this coalesces in us. And so we get most of the toxicity that we put out, you know, it's karmic. So um, just, it's all about regaining our relationship. I don't want to you have more questions I, I do have more questions but yeah I wanted to comment that you know I used to be big into drugs and I was addicted I was a slave to pharmaceutical drugs and to alcohol and this was like probably over um, like five years ago I've been on my healing journey and then I realized you can get high in healthy ways like you were saying and from health and from from breath, I haven't experienced this yet, and that is why I'm learning from you today. But there's just so many ways, and it helps you in the long run. It doesn't hurt you, and it's just amazing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's our choices. We all have the dignity of choice, and you know, you can essentially. I, I'm a Taoist, you know, and, and a Buddhist and a Rasta, <laughs> and to me, you know, the whole thing is you know, to go with the will of nature. You can go with or against, and, you know, by and large, humanity is going against nature. And we wonder. Oh, sorry. Hope that okay. Yeah. I don't but, see you anymore, but I hear you. Hmm. Let me see if I go inside if it's any better. I know exactly what you're dealing with because I'm in my car right now because I can't trust my I can't trust the internet at my land at all. Yeah, that's how it is in the country. <laughs> yeah, my phone too. If it gets a slight bit hot, it will like crap out. Yeah, but, yeah, mine too. Here we go. I'm inside now, so it should do better. But I, um, I actually got like an ice pack and I was like sticking that on the back of my phone and it kind of helped, but. Okay. I might <laughs> get that if it doesn't shape up soon. But, but it's okay. Cause you're still there and we can still hear you. So I'll just ask you my next question if that's okay. For sure. Yeah. So, so if somebody wants to go breatharian and they want to follow in your footsteps, what are your, what is your advice like, you know, even just being on this juice fast, this extended juice fast, people are criti critical and they're like worried about you. They're concerned. And, um, oh, somebody else so they can see fine. Okay. Maybe, maybe they can see you, but, um, I can't see you yet, but, um, yeah. So what, what would you recommend like for them when people are criticizing, like, how do you deal with negativity do you just cut it out of your life or what do you do when you go to like a normal gathering um, where, you know, people are asking you a lot of questions and maybe they're just not understanding you. How do you cope with that? What do you do? That's a totally valid and super interesting question. That's probably the hardest part of this path 
mostly you feel really good and just start feeling better and better as long as you're doing it right. You know, um, uh, you really have to honor your body and listen to your body. And, you know, if you feel the need to eat, like, don't repress, even on a psychological level, you know, um, it's just this thing of getting back into it. Um, because, yeah, the biggest thing is our social connection with food. It's such a, it's such a communal thing, this connection with the earth and the connection with other people when we sit and eat together. And that's largely why I'm still liquidarian. You know, it's just being in, I feel like I could uh, phase full breath Aryan and that because I want to, I feel liberated in that state. It feels, I feel when I, I just did a, uh, 45 hour dry fast man at the end I felt like a, a baby a fresh baby you know and I'm just like why would I you know and that's what my you know teachers say is like you know I don't not eat uh, for any other reason that I'm I'm not going to feel better after eating than I, I do now you know so it's that whole thing on the one hand of dignity of choice. The other thing, I don't know, I've been involved. I've been working with a network marketing company that sells superfood juices. Yes. You know? I'm going to ask you about that. And, tell, and I tell, tell you, us more about that. Well, uh, uh, the, the juices are phenomenal in terms of connecting in with my um, heart as a permaculturalist and, you know, someone who wants to purvey uh, true health. Um, like they grow their fields uh, 30 miles from anywhere that even sprays glyphosate. So unlike a lot of the food that you get in the store, you know, um, it's just downwind downstream, even if it's, you know, certified organic. It's got chemical pesticides and residues. More than likely, <laughs> it's in the rain, you know. We also have, like, a, a third-party tested probiotic that'll clean glyphosate out of the body, Um the guy who started the company is just super core about it, and he's in intermittent fasting, superfood juices. And it's all basic chronic practice. So that's what appealed to me, you know, about it. And it gives me, as someone who is very busy, as you said, you know, I love creating my own juices out of wild things from the garden and stuff from the farm and stuff. But mostly I grow that stuff for other people, for my my friends and my family and, you know, um, uh, the, the juices make it easy for me to like run around like a, a crazy person. You know, I try not, I try to keep the crazy out of it and keep my center, you know, at all times, because that's a huge part of this. You can't waste your energy with anxiety and, you know, trying to take on too much and um, all that kind of stuff. You have to be on in a greater way, you know, um, but you know, being a part of that company has been also helping me like learn to just like take a no, you know, our culture. We feel so completely rejected if we, if someone tells us no about something or that they don't like it and haters are going to hate, you know, and you just kind of have to shed them you know, and, and not care, you know, it's like some will somewhat, so what, you know, it's, uh, your path is for you and people who are called to, to, you know, be into breath you really have to feel called. It's not something that's for everyone. You know, there's like this, um, um, but it is something that's available to everyone, but you kind of have to want it, you know, um, because it's not easy to, to initiate. It takes this discipline, you know, but to be disciplined is to be a disciple of yourself and to get what you want. So it's worthwhile. And um, and most of my friends know me. I've been talking about it now. You just, you know, put yourself out there and be in your authenticity and the you know bravery of your own truth. And people, you know, are going to just have to accept you. <laughs> you know, they just don't, they've got a choice. You know, and, you know, I, most of my friends look to me at this point, because, of course, because my health is, you know, I'm 45, but my health is better than I was when I was 18. I'm, I'm much stronger. I'm, I'm much more refined in my mind, you know, and, um, and in my practice and in my way. And so it's like breaking this illusion that as we age, we have to degrade. We can get better and better and better, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I've been experiencing reverse aging myself. It's been amazing. Um, yeah. 
do you do you drink your own urine? I know a lot of breatharians do this. There's a lot of controversy around the topic. What do you think about it? <laughs> I was just talking with another brother, another breatharian about this just the other day. Um, and I just don't think that there should be any dogma about it myself. Uh, that's kind of what starts to come through a little bit is that you have to drink your pee. Um, I think there's many ways to be a breatharian as there are people who want to become breatharians, just like there's as many ways to garden as there are gardeners or musicians is, who do music. We all have our own unique style, our proclivities and the things we want. I don't drink my urine, not because I'm against it. I recognize the health benefit of it. I recognize the thousands of years of healing practice of Shivambu. Um, I know that you're recirculating your stem cells that way. But that I work with dry fasting in that way because dry fasting also creates stem cells in the body and you're looping your pee. It just you don't have to redrink it, you know. And most people say it's it starts to taste really good, you know, but it's if I'm breaking my dry fast, I want something I like. I want like a chocolate mushroom elixir or like a, you know what I mean or like watermelon juice uh, it's just tasty I like those things and that's just my, my my style my proclivity I don't think there's one wrong way or, or one right way. but I do know that there's a, that you have to build the energy in the body you know moving to raw food sorry about that mm -hmm. Here we go. Sorry. Um, okay. Moving to raw, raw food is a pretty key thing because it's about uh, feeding your body more energy. Raw food has more biophotons. Uh, we kind of got to get away from the whole, especially with respect to this practice of breatharianism. I think this is going to also be the, the next wave of the future in terms of medical science is energy healing. It's already come through in terms of like, clinical research about Reiki, about Qigong, healing chronic illness, you know, gnarly disease, you know, with energy medicine. Um, and uh, so it's uh, uh, this whole thing of recognizing that we're energy beings first and foremost and f honoring our energy, you know, uh, and uh, being aware of our integrity being aware of our, our toroidal field, being aware of our what we create, you know, and um, and doing these energy practices, I think we're actually all going to move to breatharianism. Is the way I understand it in terms of astrology and things, you know, of the ancient past is that we were once all pranic, we're all brilliant, you know, manifestations of Jah, and so it's. Uh, um, in this time, we're growing closer to the galactic center. We've been, you know, there was the whole talk of 2012, right? We were going, that was the Kali Yuga going away from the galactic center in the darkness. 2012 was turning the corner and coming back around the orbit where we're moving closer to the galactic source. And there's these streams of ultraviolet light that are washing our bodies. Or your pineal gland and your DNA are microcrystal and transmitter receiver. So you can't help it. You're going to get woken up, every one of us, you know. And the whole thing of juicing, you know, and what you're experiencing is as you cleanse the, the eliminatory channel, the lymphatic channels, you're also opening up the energetic channels, the electrical channels to flow energy through your body more. So that's where real health is. Your mitochondria need energy. They don't need food, dense food. They need energy. So... Um, that, that's what I understand of what's up with, with that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. I feel like when you are eating a standard American diet and you're, you're backed up, like you don't even realize you're so backed up as I now know after juicing for 102 days and, um, still eliminating like less so now it more looks like what i juice finally it's like what i'm juicing it's getting you know getting there so it's like i i feel the energy and i i kind of felt it but it was so muted so numbed down when 
you're eating your regular foods. And then I started to feel it more. And I was like addicted when I started to go, when I went raw vegan, I was like, oh my God, I feel so different. I feel so amazing. And I'm feeling connected and not like something intuition kicks in and this light comes on. And now that I'm this far into liquidarianism, it's like, uh, I can feel the energy of a tree. When I touch the tree, I feel like the energy running up and down the tree and I feel all the energies everywhere. And, uh, it's just that, you know, I don't want to let that go. And I want to see, like you said, how far does it go? How deep, how high can I take myself? Where, you know, where will it take me? What, how much deeper can I get? What more can I learn? And it seems when you're, you know, filled with dense foods, you just really, you really close yourself off to a lot of that stuff. The prana can't flow as easily. Your breath can't flow. Uh, your body, most people's, that's the other thing about the juicing path, you know, and how it, it's a quickening to this state, is 70% of your energy goes to digestion of food, especially if it's denser food. Most people have 20 to 30 pounds of shit inside yes. their body. I can tell you after 1,200 days plus of juicing that I still eliminate. If you spend 40 years like I did eating and you still got accumulation, even if you've been doing raw and everything like that. And, you know, and then, you know, the parasites get you and, uh, et cetera, and uh, candida overgrowth and they vie for food, you know, disease nestles in this, you know, uh, so two thirds of your interstitial water is your lymph and only one third is blood. So your lymph system is actually more important than your, your blood. Um, and everything you put in here has to go through the lymph. It's essentially like the toilet system of your body. And if it gets backed up, it's the same thing as the sewer getting backed up. So that's how our bodies become septic and acidic. And that, you know, lays the foundation for a whole host of degenerative disease, you know, um, so that's where raw and juicy, raw is high water, high electricity, high enzyme, you know, or liquidarian, where you're just getting dense micronutrient and structured water from plants, you know, that's washing your lymphatic system, washing your eliminatory system, cleansing it out and opening up to energetic channels, giving your, your cells, uh, you know, that deep nutrition because a lot of people may be way overweight and completely malnourished because they're not absorbing anything. You know, they don't have glyphosate has ruined their intestinal, you know, and antibiotics has ruined their intestinal microflora. You know, they become overweight and they're, they're plugged up, you know? Um, so I worry about, you know, wondering about people worrying about you, you know, and they're coming from a place of concern of care, you know, and you juice fast and, you know, it's just breaking paradigms, you know, for people when to be like a hundred days of juice. Oh my gosh, that's unbelievable. You know, and it it is kudos to you for your determination and holding it. And anything you can do ninety days, you can do forever as a lifestyle. So that's something to remember. Wow, um, I didn't think about. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, we can entrain. So that's how I've done everything. I've done is just kept doing it for 90 days plus, And then it is part of my life. Yeah. It's I, don't not hard. Have, I don't even think about it. It's part of my day. It's part of my, what I do, you know? Yeah. So, and you just grow it slowly, incrementally would be the, the slow healing is always the, the, the strongest, the gentle healing is always the strongest. So, you know, like, um, so for when I, instance, when I first started dry fasting, my first dry fast was 16 hours. The second one was 24 hours. The next one was 32 hours. I didn't go for like, I'm going to do 10 days dry fasting on my first dry fast. You know, nothing like that. you have shock the body, you know. Um, you want to, you know, working with, you know, even the juicing. If you start to feel like hungry and you want to stay liquidarian, Blend a smoothie, you know, get a blended soup, 
I had to do that on day 19. I was really sick. And I was really dizzy for three days straight. So I just had a smoothie and then I felt fine and went back to my juicing. You don't have to take it so hard that you're, yeah, I agree with that. And to be easy on yourself on the whole way and enjoy the process. Yeah. So key. So key. It should be enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you see, sometimes you see those people that, like I saw someone yesterday shared, um, a picture of themselves when they they just got so thin that they were they were on the verge of death they were really obsessed with dry fasting really obsessed with detoxing and it got to it went too far and they didn't look healthy like you do or other breatharians that i see and you know how do you keep from you know you've got to you've got to nourish yourself still in all the ways that you mentioned and this person didn't look like they were nourishing. You know, it became a self-abuse thing, and that's, that's not what it's about. Not at all. No, this is about healing. We don't want to. We don't want to be self-flagellating. It's not about a competition. It's not you know a spiritual hierarchy. I'm no more spiritual than you just because I don't eat. You know, I feel more. I feel very connected to spirit because I don't have this obstruction. You know. But um, uh, you're 100% right that people can get too caught up in their mind about the idea. And the, and then they get hard on themselves. And, you know, we're so used to, like, this type A, like, I'm just going to make it happen. This is Wu Wei. This is your body. This is nature. So what my teacher would say is you have to nourish yourself to breatharianism. And that's just what I did. I just started I think I'm losing you right now. Hold on one sec. I'll be right back. <laughs> 